All right, welcome back to the shop once again. Today we are working on a 2002 Ford Explorer. You guys probably saw this in a couple other videos. We're changing out the rear axle seals. You can see, you know, there's a lot of new parts on here. It's gonna be a lot of new videos coming out too. Now, these rear axle seals are very, 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 very common to leak. Let me try to get you up inside of here. You can see this one leaking right there where the half shaft goes into the rear pumpkin. Now, what happens with these is that they'll leak so much by the time they're recognized that a lot of times it travels to the nose of the differential and it's misdiagnosed as a pinion seal leak. So if you have a bunch of leakage back here, make sure you check these, get all up in there up high where it's gonna sling and see if it's actually leaking back here or the nose before you start taking it apart. It should look something like this. Nice and clean, no leakage all the way around. Now these are kind of a pain to get out and change out, uh, but we're gonna walk you through it today and get this job done. Before I get started, I wanna go over the entire procedure real quick, up close, so you guys can see what I'm taking off and removing to get this half shaft out of here. And then we'll pull you back so you can watch the whole procedure happen. Now the very first thing you wanna do is jack the vehicle up, put it on some jack stands in the frame like that, get the wheel out of the way, 19 millimeter lug nuts, and then it'll be all exposed like this so you can start removing components. Now the very first thing you wanna do is spray some rust penetrant on the nose of this right here and the threads, and then we're gonna spin off this nut. It's a 36 millimeter axle nut, and then we're gonna use a hub puller or an air hammer and we're gonna vibrate this shaft through because it is a press fit into the hub. We're also going to have to take off the, you know, separate the upper arm from the knuckle here. And that's gonna be a chore because it's a pinch fit, okay? So I'll show you a couple procedures to get that out. We're actually gonna be taking out this bolt right here as a square head on one side and an 18 mil on the other side. We're gonna tap that through and get that separated. We're going to remove our caliper. We're just gonna hang it right here in the coil. You'll see it just fits right in there, holds for us. 10 mil bolt, 10 mil bolt. And we're also going to remove this toe link right here. Um, you can remove it here or down there. It's actually easier, the 18 millimeter nut. Um, and that'll allow us to kind of flip this forward and out of the way so we can get that half shaft up and out of here. Now we're also going to loosen this nut right here, which is a 13 16 On the other side is an 18 mil. You see it right there? And we're just gonna loosen that, but we're gonna leave it in there. And that'll hold the knuckles weight while we flip it forward, okay? Now this, this uh, brake, little parking brake cable, is gonna stay in place. That'll kind of help hold it, uh, the whole knuckles weight. Um, but that's basically the procedure and then we can go underneath and we can pop that shaft out of there and start changing that seal It's all of this stuff that's gonna be rusted not on mine. Of course, it's all new um, But yeah, that's gonna be the fight. All right sit back and watch it all happen First thing we're gonna do is pull this caliper off out of the way 10 mil bolts and we're probably going to remove the rotor too because it's brand new, it's gonna fall right off. And uh, just get it out of the way because the whole knuckle is gonna tilt forward and you don't wanna fall on your feet. So let's get these out. These come out pretty darn easy in general. I never had a problem with these uh, coming out on here. Get them off to the side. Da -da -da. Now, this caliper hooks in up top here, but comes out down here. So, find your cat claw or flathead screwdriver, and we'll get it underneath the ears here and try to lift it out. Now, if, you're, if your rotor is old and has a rust ridge on it, you want to compress the um, caliper in a little bit with a C clamp or wood, wood clamp. Compress the piston in a bit, and you'll be able to get it off much easier that way. Otherwise, you lift from the bottom, you want to help it so you don't ruin the piston. It'll come up and out of there. And then, based on the design of these, you can simply 
push it back like that and it'll hold it. Now the rotor, like I said, this one is new. I don't want the extra weight on there either way. Um, so we're gonna take it off. Um, now if yours is just stuck on there, it's rusted, but you still don't want to fall on your toes, do like I did. Put a couple uh, lug nuts on there so it doesn't fall off of there. Now for me, because it is a nice new rotor, we're gonna take it off. Because you want to be able to spray the threads and clean them without getting the oil all over the rotors. So what I'll do is just put a rag underneath here, a little rust penetrant, the Mopar stuff works great. Ask the Mopar guys, they know about rust. And then I like to get the corrosion off the threads or otherwise as it comes back, 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 the nut, it's just gonna build more and more corrosion and bind up and might actually start ruining the threads that were not ruined before, just by pulling the nut off. Uh, you don't wanna do that, so clean it up. Make sure it's pretty decent. And then we're gonna use a 36 mil on here and we're gonna take it all the way off. At this point, you want to press the CV shaft out of the hub and bearing right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to use an air hammer and a little tip like this, and it'll just kind of vibrate it through. The other option is one of those hub pullers that bolt onto three different studs here, and it presses it right on through. Um, but this method I use because it works so well in general. Unless I have to go that route, I won't. <laughs> Just like that. You use a good high quality air hammer in that tip on there and it will vibrate right through until it's loose. And at that point you just stop. You can start working on the rest of this and then we'll pull it through. So like I said, there's a, a bolt up here, a pinch bolt, and then right here is a pinch bolt also. They're both 18 millimeter uh, nuts on them. And they'll hold in place because the heads are square. So that works out for us. Now once the bolts, uh, the nuts are off of these two, you simply go to the other side Just like that, and it'll fly right out of there. They look a little something like that. See that? And generally, these come right out too. Same thing on this side. They have a bullet nose to the bolts, so it's pretty impossible to ruin any thread, so don't worry about it. See, they come right out. This thing's rusty as can be and it comes right out. Now, here is the hard part. These both have a pinch design to them, okay? So it's actually gonna be pretty hard to separate these out of there. Now this one right here is gonna fly right out of here because it's new. If yours is loose enough or you're not in the salt belts of America, you can generally go like this. You can just kinda Tap it and it'll come out just like that. That's ideal, that's not going to happen though. So on the back side here, you'll see a slit. What you wanna do is use something like this, a thick flat blade screwdriver. Get it into that slit, pound it in there, it will spread open and then that joint, either the toe link or the upper will come out that much easier because it'll be open up then there's no tension on them so this one's a little easier to get to this one's a little harder but it works the same way and that'll help you get these separated which is gonna be the worst part of the job it'll help you um, without damaging them let's go ahead and loosen just loosen this lower mounting bolt for the knuckle to the lower control arm so this thing can move back and forth free 18 mil on this side, 
13 sixteenths on this side. There we go. It's moving in there. It's good to do. Just like that. Now, let's work on the upper here. And then once that's out, we're going to finish pushing this through the CV shaft. And this whole thing will fall forward. And then we can start moving the shaft out of the differential. Um, now, this one right here, again, you want to put that screwdriver in back here. I'm going to work on that. And then, once it is there, you don't want to use a pickle fork because you're going to split that boot no matter what. You don't want to do it. Once it's split back here with that pressure relieved, we can simply tap it on up and out of there. Believe me, this is nice and strong. It's not going to do any damage to it once the pressure is relieved. Let's bring you in close to show you where you want to insert that screwdriver. You can see on this, this slit in the back side here, you want to just pound it in there. There's enough room in here to pound it in there. It's going to spread it so we can get that out of there. You can see how it spread like that. Same idea with this one right here. You see the slit in there, right there? Same idea. Um, so watch, you'll see this thing's gonna pound right out of there. Now watch this, with the spread, we're gonna use a little one pound ball peen. It's separate at this point. See, it's just binding a little bit. There we go. That's how easy it can be with a spread like that. This rusty nightmare is over. And the arm will stay out of the way for us. Only thing that's holding us from flopping down right now is this CV shaft. We need to finish pushing it through as the knuckle comes forward. There she is. There it is. CV shaft is separated. And I just let this part just hang. The bolt's gonna hold it, the parking brake is gonna hold it. We have free access here now to get this shaft out. All right, under the vehicle here, here's the differential pumpkin, and here's our CV shaft going out to the left-hand side. Now the idea here is that this is locked in to the differential a carrier inside of here by a circlip. So what we need to do is tap it out. You can use pry bars on most CV shafts, but on these I found it's best to use a three pound sludge and a brass drift. And we're simply gonna tap on it with the hammer and it'll drive it past that circlip so it collapses and lets it go. Now the driver's side is much, I would say it's harder than the passenger side because of clearance issues here. So your angle of your brass drift is much more, um, whereas on the passenger side, it's more direct out. So it may take a while on this side. You may wanna spin it a couple times, hit it from different sides, but right here is the area. And I'll try to do this on camera, give you guys an idea. I wanna hit it direct on. And believe me, this thing is tough. It's gonna handle your hits, but it just may take a while. I mean, you may need to really hit it. Oh, I got lucky. I got real freaking lucky. It started moving already. At this point, it's still kind of hooked in there, uh, but it's free um, from the groove. After a few more times and still, until it you know, comes out about this far and then we can simply lift and support it and pull the whole shaft out together from the other side. It's going to be heavy. They're heavy duty on these vehicles and you want to support it all the way through when we're pulling it out. Especially going back in. You either want to run the new seal. <sighs> there it is. Let's pull it out. The idea here is to support it, both sides, the best you can. There we go. Once it's out of there, we're gonna work the boot and the whole thing up past here. What you wanna do is get this guy 
far, far away. Cover your threads right here with a rag uh, for your stab link. And then you can kind of get it up and past here without damage. Look at this one, it's been leaking for a while. You can tell, I mean, it's just all over the place on the inboard side of the CV shaft here. Now this is a good example of what you probably, I guess, will still run across. I thought these were all gone actually. Now Ford uh, at the factory had used a different seal and they used this excluder seal they call it, which is basically a dust and water shield. Now the new seal that we're installing does not require this excluder dust seal. And if you keep it on there, you're gonna ruin the new seal. So what you wanna do is look, make sure it's, it's, see if it's on there or not. If it is, it simply taps right off. You wanna get it out of here. So you get like a screwdriver or something like that, a punch, just get a couple taps, spin it. And it comes right off. Get that thing out of here. Not need it anymore. Now at this point, you're free to you know clean up the inboard part of the CV shaft here. You want to make you want to inspect and clean all your seal surfaces and bearing surfaces on the CV shaft here. But we're gonna do the major cleanup of this part for mine, anyways, at the end with a hose and some degreaser um, to really get it off of there. So go ahead and clean this up, and then we're going to go under the vehicle once again to replace the seal. All right, here's a good view of the left-hand side of the differential, so you guys can see a couple different methods for removing the old axle seal. Now on the outside of the seal here, there's going to be a course of flange. We might have to clean off some of this gobbledygook and corrosion and all that to get a look at it. Uh, but what you can do is simply start caving in that flange. And on the older ones, it's very, very small. So we're using a flat blade screwdriver, okay, and it has a three pound sledge, just so we have some weight. Make lighter taps that way uh, with all that weight coming in. And you can simply, you know, cave it in you know, I'd say halfway around here, and then you get behind it and you kind of hook it and get it out of there. Now the driver's side here, again, because it's closer to the frame, it's a little bit harder to get in here and do it, but it's, it's very doable. Now once you start lifting the seal away from the housing here, um, be ready, it's gonna start draining some axle fluid. Now, my favorite method, which does not destroy or potentially damage, uh, the case is a long pry bar like this. I'm going to get it behind the seal, okay, as close to the housing as possible, and then give it a good tug, like so. And you'll see it'll fly right out of there. And there's no damage at all over here or over here. Here comes the axle fluid. Now on the outside here where that new seal flange is gonna meet against the housing, you wanna of course, you know, clean it up. I like to use a, a little flat blade screwdriver like this to kind of clean it off of corrosion and sealant. And then there's gonna be a bevel just beyond it, like right here all the way around. And that's what's gonna catch all of the sealant. Like you see some right here all the way around you're going to notice it um, you want to get that old sealant from the old seal off and just keep cleaning it and looking at it and see where you need to continue your quest and try to you know obviously grab it and pull it out not push it in to the differential you just pretty mucky back here little scraping and a rag and you can see it looks much better already so let's work on that getting it nice and clean for the new seal now the new sealant from Ford which is the only one I recommend even though it's a little costly um, does come pre-greased on the inside here and there's a sealant bead on the outside so it'll seal right up for you once you pound it in 
Now, these ones are kind of hard to get in. They'll get cocked in there quite often. So get it tapped in enough and then look at it. Make sure it's not cocked too much in there or else you're going to ruin the seal. Make sure it's going in nice and even is what I'm trying to say. Now, there is a special tool from Ford, kind of. It's actually an old tool they made work for this. But the idea is any tool you use, you want it to go around the outside flange here. Something like that and then I'll pound it right in directly. So what I'll do is I'll go under the vehicle, I'll put the seal in by hand, I'll use the seal installer itself and a one pound hammer and just tap it all the way around to get it started even. Then what I do is I'll use an extension from outside here, get it on there, make sure it's level, Okay, and then we'll just tap it through and we'll seat it all the way this way. And after a while, you're going to hear it change sound and you'll know it's fully seated. In the end, you're gonna to wanna to come down here and do a post check, make sure it's in all the way around as you see here. Nice and even, nice and close. And then the seal is installed. We can start reassembly. All right, going back together, we're gonna to install our CV shaft. It's all cleaned up. Make sure your seal and bearing surface is greased. And then we can heave this thing in here. Get past all this stuff. Get it close. We can get rid of this now. And make sure you get it right in the center and into the differential. Now, once you get it in so far, you want to keep turning it like this. And now it won't turn no more because it's splined with the carrier inside of there. Now, once it's splined with the carrier inside of there, Yep, we're definitely spline. We're gonna plunge it. And then we'll push the circlip back past it into the groove. Right there. You see it fell right past and then it bottomed out like that. Go underneath, grab that inboard part of the shaft and try to yank it out of the differential. Be locked in there, good to go. And ready for reassembly of the suspension. All right, now believe it or not, the hard part is over. We're going back together. What I do is I will put a little bit of grease on the splines here so it can go into the hub a bit better. Make sure this, the uh, threads on the shaft here are clean with some brake clean. For these, the upper ball joint and your toe link down here, I'll clean them up and then I'll put a little bit of anti-seize on there and in the bore on the knuckle here so that it actually goes in there a lot easier, seats easier, and comes apart easier in the future. So this is the basic procedure. So we're gonna lift the knuckle up and we're gonna spline the CV shaft first. Get it in there, straight. And it should fall right in, and when you turn this back and forth, you can see it's locked to the CV. At this point, we can concentrate on the upper here. If you push down on it, enough it'll hold like that for you. And then we'll just tap it in. Just like so. Now your bolt, uh, you want to clean it up and put a little bit of blue Loctite on there. And then we'll just tap it through. Now it's going to go through um, the center of the shaft on the upper ball joint. So it locks it in there for you. So it should go in pretty easy. And kind of just tap through the other side. That's how you're know, you know you're in that channel. Put the nut on here. The 18 mil nut, 
You can go ahead and tighten it down now. We'll just snug it down with the impact. We'll come back and torque all this stuff down later. Torque specs will be down below in the video description so you guys have a reference. The next thing we're gonna do is get this tow link in here. Again, just taps in. And your bolt goes through the top here. Same thing, blue Loctite, it holds it all together. We'll just snug it for now. Over here on this side, there's gonna be a bracket that holds the parking brake cable. It's gonna be bent forward from pulling the knuckle down. You simply wanna grab it and just push it back and that'll keep it away from the tire. At this point, with it up like this and together, let's go ahead and snug the lower bolt. We're just gonna leave it snug for now until the weight of the vehicle is up and we're at ride height. So just finger tighten it or snug it up. Don't torque it down. All right, there we go. Next, we'll install the axle nut. Same thing, we'll use blue Loctite. A good quantity of it. I'll put it on the, the threads and on the nut. Because I'm a nut like that. You'll see why, see that? I'm turning it on by hand. The self-locking nylon, self-locking feature, this nut is gone. So we need to help it along with some Loctite. We'll snug this up again and draw the CV in. Let's throw our rotor back on if you took it off. Fully seated on there. And then we can work on getting the caliper back into place. You're gonna do the same thing as we took it off. We're gonna hook in the top first. Once we get it on here. And you wanna pull back on your caliper guide pins far enough uh, so you can get it up in here. You'll see them hanging up back here. And it should just literally tap on that easy. Everything's hooked in, top and bottom. And at that point, these eight millimeter or 10 mil bolts just go right in. You definitely wanna thread these by hand, a couple threads, uh, because they're really easy to cross thread. So just do that, make sure you have no problems. Feels good, feels good. And then we'll simply tighten them down by hand. Now there is a torque spec to these, I think it's like 20 something foot pounds, 22. Um, but I use my 10 mil gear wrench flex head version and it gives me enough leverage to, with my strength, uh, to get it just right. I can feel for it, yep, right there. All right, now with everything back together, you wanna go ahead and torque the upper ball joint and the toe link pinch bolts. You can torque those now. And then you want to have a helper hit the brakes so they can hold the rotor and we can torque down the axle nut. Then we're going to put the wheel back on, torque the lug nuts to 100 foot-pounds, put the vehicle down onto the ground, and then we're going to torque the lower control arm to knuckle bolt to spec at that point. And that will keep the bushing inside of there at a relaxed state at ride height. Go for a drive. Make sure everything's okay. That makes sure there's no leaks, all that good stuff. And then you might come back and re-torque the lug nuts to 100 foot-pounds once again. If your axle was leaking really bad, uh, like this one was, you want to, of course, go in there and adjust the fluid level. There's a little plug on the back side of the pumpkin, and you want to fill it to the bottom of the fill hole so it's good to go. 75, 140. I'll put links to everything down below. That's it, it's the most common failure on the Explorers. We finally have a video here on the Ford Techniki Loco channel. I hope this helped you fix your Ford yourself. I'll see you next time, guys. Quick additional note, these rear differentials actually have a special fill procedure. 
Now, the way that these get filled is you have the vehicle nice and level. Then we're going to come back here and remove the fill plug. We're going to let the fluid drain out until it's even with the threads here. Then we're going to put some thread sealant on the plug and put it back into there. Torque it down to 25 foot-pounds. And then here is a special part. We're going to come over here above the differential. Get you up in here. And you see that sensor right there? That's the rear diff ABS sensor. It has a 10 millimeter bolt right there. You want to remove the bolt and the sensor and then add an additional pint of 75140. And that will bring the differential to the proper level. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time, guys.